Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Why is it when you need a miracle, it doesn't happen, but when you least expect it, it happens? You are married. You have challenges in your relationship, but your spouse is unwilling to accede to any counseling. Is divorce an option? I'm no How does a parent handle a promiscuous child? A what are considered the do's and don'ts of a born-again so couple who is not yet married? There are always more questions than answers. That so here is Apostle Gemma. Good morning. Welcome to Ask Pastor Gemma. Apostle Gemma and Apostle Vivian are the pastors of Divine Destiny Worship Center located in Diego Martin on the Diego Martin Main Road opposite to Sardonic's Drive. The church has branches in Antigua, Tobago, Faisabad, Chagonas, Sangre Grande, and our newest branch in Rio Claro. A very good morning to you. Imagine we are in 2019, but most of us would be thankful as we left off from last year because we are happy that we are alive. Um, 2019 holds promise because uh, it's future. And one good thing about the future, we can change our future. Remember I told you a story, those of you who follow me, about God speaking to Apostle Vivian and telling him that we can't change our past, but we can alter our future positively if we use our present to cooperate with God. And so um, 2018 may not be the best year that you've had, but now is your chance to decide that you will give God the management of your life. And uh, that's how I describe what we call in Christian parlance, salvation. You know, we say that we saved. And many people are confused, say from what? Well, from a whole lot of stuff, <laughs> you know? But it really means stopping a while and saying to God, manage my life for me. And it begins with us accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. In John 3:16, the Bible says, for God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God made an offer. And uh, for me to enjoy everlasting life that begins now and doesn't end when I die, um, I must accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And all it means is that I'm handing over the management of my life to God. What he does is he takes care of the past. Uh, he deals with me in the future, makes some adjustments in my life and create a better future for me, which is a really good bargain in my mind. So despite what happened before, you can't change that. So let's look ahead and bring God in so that 2019 could be different if you want it to be. Uh, give God a little bit of attention as well. What do I mean by that? Start praying, you know, discipline yourself. It doesn't have to be long. Um, get up in the morning and say something to God. You know, just say, Lord, I hand over my day to you. Uh, if you have family members and say, Lord, just keep them safe from harm, from danger. Supply our needs today. You know, in your own words, uh, just talk to him. It doesn't take a, a long time after a while. When you begin, it will get a little longer and longer as you get into practice. And uh, sometimes uh, what makes us want to talk to God more when we see results and you will, because he hears and he answers prayer. The next thing I want you to do is read the Bible. And you may say, well, the 66 books, where do I begin? And uh, I'll tell you some of the favorite places that people like to start. Psalms is one place that people like to start. I know we normally say Psalms of David, but after a while when you get to know a little more about the Bible, you'll realize that although King David wrote most of the Psalms, he didn't write all of them. 
but that's beside the point. So start reading the Psalms. Most people love the Psalms. Proverbs is another good place to start because Proverbs is usually called the wisdom book and it's full of wise sayings. Most people say if you read Proverbs a chapter day, 31 chapters, then it will do you well. And some people, when you uh, reach 31, you start again the next month, just stay right there because the am amount of things that you could learn from that, it will take you a while to get it. Then if you are somebody who is curious about Jesus Christ, uh, you don't have a background in Bible, then John in the New Testament, the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John, the fourth gospel, is the place to start because John tells you immediately about Jesus, who he is, and establishes the fact that he is God. And so when Jesus comes into your heart, your life, when he manages your life, you actually allow God to manage your life. But we will talk about those things at another time. So we're looking forward to having a wonderful year with Holy Spirit guiding you as you allow him to. And uh, it can only get better, uh, especially if you feel that, uh, well, things are really bad. When you're right on the ground, the only place to go is up. So be encouraged this morning. Today, though, I want to start at two parts of uh, uh, some excerpts from the book launch of uh, Dr. Angel Duncan. Um, Angel is married to our elder son. We have two sons. Uh, well, he's the eldest child, but the elder son. And uh, she launched her book, One Month with a King, um, in Trinidad, a Trinidad launch, and it was a wonderful launch. And of course, the king she's talking about primarily in the book is King David. Um, but in the end, uh, she talks about our ultimate king, Jesus Christ. Um, she didn't say one month with the king, it's one month with a king. And there are many lessons, as I said, we could learn from David as you read the Psalms. I mean, it, it moves through every experience and emotion that the average human being could experience. And so I want you to really listen to what she has to say and uh, see if you can apply some of those lessons uh, uh, in your own life. The books are available online at Amazon.com. We have sold all the copies that we've had. And those of you who, well, not techno savvy and you don't have somebody to help you to get it, what we can do for you is let you know when we get the next shipment and then you can avail yourself of it. So enjoy one month with a King X soups. And uh, the next time we meet, you will have a part two, and I'm sure your life will be changed if you not only listen, but you apply those lessons to your life. One more thing I'll say. She's always been on me about doing a workbook. She's like, you know, Don, you can't just write a book. You have to do a workbook with it. And I'm not a workbook guy. That's just not my style. Everybody's different. I'm just like, you are grown. When you read, you make the decision to apply it on your own. You're an adult. I was like, I don't have to spoon feed you and be like, now do this, now do that. I was like, just read a book and you do what you have to do. But she decided to teach me how to do a workbook. Because for her book, she was insistent. I'm not just going to write a book. I'm going to write a study journal to go with the book to walk people through how to do what I'm saying. So you are experiencing before you not just information, but a step-by-step, -step, every day, listen to God's voice, engage the Holy Spirit, this is your memory verse. That kind of teacher type approach to information. So I believe that if you really took that 31 day plunge and said, I am going to go in and spend my one month with the king, your life will never be the same. So I am excited to introduce to you tonight the author of One Month with the King, 31 Lessons from the Life of King David, Dr. Angel Duncan. Thank you. You can sit. God bless you. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, Pastor Donnell, for introducing me. Um, what he didn't tell you is in 2017, I was working on a different manuscript. And that book, had, I had to put that aside because the Lord reminded me midstream while I was writing that book in the book club in 2017 that he wanted me to 
finish One Month with a King because that was a book that was prophesied that it would be your first book. So I'd started writing another book. So there's another book already halfway done, but I had to stop because God reminded me of the prophetic word that Apostle Vivian said. He said that this book would be your first book. And so therefore, 2018 pushed it out in obedience to God as the first book. Amen? Amen. Well, I thank God for the privilege to be here today to uh, share a little bit about the book and, um, you know, why, you know, I picked this topic. And um, just to go back a little bit, uh, a couple years ago, Apostle Gemma gave me the privilege um, of writing a devotional. And I'm so thankful to Apostle, Apostle Vivi, uh, Vivian and Apostle Gemma for, you know, even this time to, to come here and share this book. Um, and so they asked me if, you know, I'd jump in and help with writing devotionals. So I was happy about that because I hadn't done that before. And now it was part of the Duncan family. That's something that the Duncans do. They're right. And so, you know, I jumped in and I started writing. And I was, you know, that kind of helped to birth uh, the desire to write in me. As a child, I actually used to write. I used to write stories. That was kind of a way of escape. I used to write stories and do little um, illustrations. And I showed it to my mom, and she thought those were good. But then I kind of put it aside because no one really pushed me to write. But if we knew that that was something I was doing as a child on my own, that, you know, writing was something that maybe the Lord had for me. But no one knew that at the time. But anyway, so the Lord brought it back through the devotionals. And so I did that, and I was reminded of, you know, hey, you know, I actually kind of like writing. This is a good thing, you know. And I did a devotional on um, One Month with the King. And the title came from, um, you know, Tamala Manns back in the day. She had that, that um, Take Me to the King. And then, of course, we had um, that movie that came out, One Night with the King. Well, I thought about that, and I said, you know what? What if you spent like 30 days with God in his presence? What kind of transformation could he do in your heart? So I picked that topic, and I did the devotional on that. And I literally just, you know, talk to God about, okay, show me what you're doing in this, in this story about David. What are some things that, you know, we can actually use in a 30-day window to, you know, transform our hearts, transform our lives? So I wrote the devotional based on, you know, just a download from the Lord. And, you know, short and sweet. Well, actually, it was a little bit long. <laughs> I read Apostle Jim will tell you, my devotional for that um, particular area was long because I just kept writing and I submitted it. And, of course, we had to shave it down, shave it down, shave it down. But Apostle Vivian was the one that said, that is a book. And that is going to be your first book. I prophesy that that's your first book. And I just kind of took that and, you know, okay, great. You know, maybe one day, when, however, I don't know. And I put it in the back of my mind. And um, the other thing that encouraged me was because Apostle Gemma, she also was the editor. And she actually had read through the devotional and I, she called me and I don't know if you remember but what she said it really resonated with me and it gave me the um, encouragement to really pursue it and really take that prophetic word and she said I want you to know that I was reading your devotional and it moved me that's what she said and and some of the topics you know she didn't specify specifically but she said it moved me and I just want you to know and it was it meant a lot to me so I kept that and then, of course, when my husband, you know, we tapped into Divine Destiny, you guys is, uh, you know, book club, and he said, hey, we're going to take this next year and we're going to write books. And then I said, okay, great. And so, remember I said I had another manuscript I was working on. And um, that manuscript, I was working on it, and I was really having a hard time, you know, kind of hearing from God concerning that. I had a skeleton, but I couldn't really hear. I was like, Lord, why can't I hear? What's, you know... Tell me what to write. And then in the night, one night I woke up in the middle of the night, like I was asleep, and I woke up, and then I just heard the prophecy that Apostle Vivian said, one month with the king, that's your first book. So then I stopped writing that manuscript that I had been going to the book club trying to force, and then I picked up one month with the king. And then I just started writing it and, and hearing from God, and the Lord began to fill in the gaps, and, you know, I'd already written a bunch but the Lord began to give new insight, new revelation, and really share his heart. And, you know, even when I was going through it, you know, there are times when I would read it myself, and I'd 
tears would come to my eyes at certain points because um, many of the, the lessons are lessons that I have walked, that I, that I know, you know, about the fathers and that, you know, that God is a good father. And, and, and you know, when your fathers fail you, you know, it meaning your parents or even like your leaders, when they let you down, God's not like these things resonated with me or that, you know, success attracts jealousy. I've lived that. Not, on, not because I wanted to, but I understand that. So it's something just to remember, like not to be surprised when you're doing something that God's called you to do and you begin to thrive in it just because of God's anointing. Sometimes people will read it wrong and then they'll be jealous and they'll begin to sabotage and monkey wrench and all that. And you can really get your heart hurt because it, sometimes it's people that, nah, not them. See that kind, So I had to learn that. Because you still got to love God through that. And you still got to forgive them. So these are things that would make me cry when I was like, yeah, I remember that. So these are not just lessons that, you know, hey, you do this. Many of these things, they resonate with me in some way, you know. And so anyway, I just want to um, go through the book with you. I love David. I love David for two reasons. One is I love David because he loves God, like for real. The other reason I love David is because my dad's name is David. I love David. So, you know, all right, so let's go on here. Uh, just, just a couple of slides we're going to go through, and then I guess we'll fill some questions about the book. But um, give you a little overview about uh, One Month with the King. Here we go. So the purpose of the book, I talked a little bit about it just now, but basically the purpose of the book is to encourage the hearts of people who've received promises from God that seem, you know, long in coming. I know I have promises from God. I know you have promises from God. And, you know, straight up, some of the promises, you know, though they're awesome, they just aren't happening. You don't see how it's going to happen. You know, the road is hard. You know, you have opposition, but you know God said it, and that's what you got. And so this is just to encourage you on your journey, because what I found as someone who also has promises from God is every day is not easy. It's just not. God can say yes, and this shall happen for you, and you say amen, hallelujah, Jesus, and you're good for two days. Maybe have a good two-week stint. But then after a month or two months, God, you said, I, I, I don't see it yet. And you have to go back to the word. And so that's what this book is for, to encourage us. Like, listen, no, 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 God said he's going to do it. And the best example that I could find was David. Because David was anointed to be king at a very young age. But he didn't become king for many, many years. And it wasn't a straight beeline. And it wasn't like there were people who wanted him to be king or to help him. There were people who were assigned to help him, but they didn't quite get it. So, you know, been there, done that, and I'm sure you know that. And that's what this book is, to kind of keep you going. But more importantly, to keep you in a place where your heart stays uh, tender before the Lord. This book is written not for women, not for men only. It's for everybody. It's not for the young. It's not for the older or seasoned. It's for everybody. And my, my desire is that um, I would be able to see the Lord use this book to transform at least one person's life. The thing that really would, um, like the vision I see and I would love the Lord to do with this book um, and the interactive study journal is actually have people use them together to do a little, like a, a small group. You know, two or three people, hey, let's run together. Let's encourage each other together. Let's, you know, let's go hard after God together. Let's hear from God together. Get three people together. Get four people together. Spouses, hey, let's do this, babe, let's do this. We have promises. That's what I really want to see. I want to see, like, college campuses with, like, uh, young people who say, you know what? I want my friends and I to run hard after God together. And they may go to a secular school. And there's only six Christians. Hey, let's do this together. 31 days. Let's go hard after God. Let's be like David. That's what I want. But only God can do that. But you can pray that God does that. But 
overall, this book is to encourage, encourage the hearts of us. All right, let's continue here. So what has God promised you? Because I said this before, we all have promises from God. I have promises, you have promises, right? Has the Lord promised you a business, some kind of business idea? Maybe you started a business and it flopped. Maybe you started two businesses and then they flopped. But you remember, you got a word. God's still going to do it. Maybe it's a healing for you, for your family. And you're not seeing it yet. Stay encouraged. Maybe it's marriage. Maybe, you know, your marriage is on the rocks and you guys are pulling together. Nobody knows it, but you're pulling together. You're believing God to, to mend and he'll do it. You've been through some rocky things, some things that are unimaginable, but God, he's able to heal. And you're believing that. Hold on to that. Maybe it's a promotion at work. Everybody's getting promoted but you. Maybe it's just family in general. Maybe you have a child, prodigal son, a daughter. They're out there, and you're just believing God to bring them back. Some days are easier than others, but you're still believing don't give up. That's a promise. And God always keeps his promises. Maybe it's a ministry. You probably have gifts that you're sitting on. You have maybe an idea that you may have brought, you know, and it just wasn't the right time for it. And so you just kind of sat down and said, well, you know, I don't know. They don't recognize the anointing on my life. What? No, no, no. Hold on. Let the Lord open the door for you. Let him create the ministry when he needs it. It's because it's not when you want it. It's when he needs it. But hold on. Maybe it's a spouse. You know, you're like, you know, God, I'm believing you for that woman, for that man, and I don't see them yet. Don't give up. Maybe it's a home. Maybe it's relocation. God said you're supposed to be in another city, and you don't know how you could afford to live over there or however. There's no house or how's it going to Don't worry. If God promised, he's going to do it. Maybe it's college. I don't know about you, but I love college. I love school. As a child, academics initially wasn't something that I foresaw as something I could do, right? And I remember it was really hard. You'll see, a, I took a little bit about it in my book, um, a little bit about how, you know, my early years as a child. But academics was something that I never even thought I could do. I actually really believed that all my siblings would be able to go to school, but I couldn't. And the reason I believed that was because I was the eldest, and I felt like, well, I need to kind of help to make money so they can go. Like, I really believed that. I was totally not even thinking about the fact that I should go until the Lord sent someone to me. I remember I was 16 years old, and in the U.S., at 16, you can get a job. And... Um, you get a, like a work permit. And there was a McDonald's. My first job was at McDonald's because that was the one place you could work at 16. I didn't care. I just felt I needed a job to kind of help with the family. And I was, at dry, I was working the drive-thru, and there was a, a Christian couple that would come through the drive-thru, and they'd get Happy Meals for their kids. And I'd work, and I'd be nice. Oh, what, how can I help you? What would you like? And then one day he said to me, so what college are you going to? Excuse me? Oh, I, I, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to go to college. No. He says, oh, you'll be good. And he drove off. And then a couple weeks later, I was, at, it, I was at my high school. He doesn't have high school children, him and his wife. They have little kids. For some reason, I was walking down the hall in my high school, and the same guy was in my high school walking down the hall. I didn't know why he was there. I didn't ask. But he stopped me. Hey, have you thought about college? And I'm thinking, what, aren't you the guy from? He's like, yeah. And I didn't ask why he was there. But I said, no, not really. But OK, I'll think about it. And of course, I talked I, you know, talk to my dad. He talked about college. But it wasn't on the level that I thought I could go. And I said, there's this guy that came through drive-thru that mentioned college. And I, I don't know if I, you know, if I, should, if I could qualify to go, you think I should go? He said, well, you should. You should consider it. I said, all right. And so the next thing I know is in my high school, there was an internship. And they were looking for students 
who were going to go to who wanted to go to college, but they wanted a job in corporate America. So I so the um, the guidance counselor, he called me in to the office. He's and I thought I was in trouble. I didn't know why he was calling me in, but I, I had good grades in high school. I, 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 you know, I had, later I had good grades in high school. And so he said, we want you to apply for this internship through Inroads Upstate New York. I said, really? He said, yeah, you should apply. So I applied. But one of the criteria was you had to pick a college that you're going to. And so when I realized that, okay, well, in order to apply, I needed to have some kind of college to write down where I was considering to go, then I began to look at colleges. And I applied to colleges. And I ended up getting accepted into several of the ones that I applied for. But at the same time, the internship is what gave me the, um, the exposure to the fact that the world is bigger than McDonald's. And so it required me to have a real job. I worked at a bank. And I was in college. And so during the holidays, I worked in corporate America. I had to learn how to you know, dress and all that. And of course, I had to leave my McDonald's job. And here's what happened when I told them that I was leaving because I had an internship. I said, you know, I don't know how to tell you this, but you know, I, and they said, well, I'm sorry to hear that you're leaving. You know, if you stay, we'll make you a manager. <laughs> I almost passed out with laughter, but I didn't do it in their face because I said, that's rude. I just kind of, because I'm not, you know, I, and I said, you know what, I think I'm going to go to college. Thank you. But that, that word from that gentleman of, you should go, it helped me to just even think about going to college. And of course, I, you know, I loved college and continued and still love college. And I teach in college. But all this from never even thinking about going to college. But that may be you. And so if the Lord has promised you to go to college and he's going to provide, he will do that. And then, of course, wealth. If there's finances that the Lord has promised you, he's going to do that. And so I want to encourage you to hold on to the promises of God. We speak to nations. Be open. We speak to nations. Fall on your knees. We speak to nations. The kingdom is coming to you. Oh, oh. We speak to strong. I am sure you were blessed, I'm sure you were challenged, and I'm sure that you can apply something from what was said to your life. Uh, just stay tuned, next week we will have part two of it, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. 
God bless you real good. I don't want you to forget that with God, everything is possible.